Take a look at a soda can. We often don't delve into why the can is shaped this way. When engineers and designers optimize the shape of a soda can, they are essentially dealing with a three-dimensional optimization problem. The goal is to minimize the surface area of the can, which reduces the amount of aluminum used, while maximizing its volume to hold more soda. The concept of completing the square, established by mathematician al Khwarizmi, is instrumental in setting up the equations that represent this optimization problem. Of course, other mathematicians like Archimedes and Euclid also contributed to the development of the concept, but al Khwarizmi was the first mathematician to present the concept systematically in his book. This method of completing the square is not just a mathematical trick, it's a fundamental technique that simplifies calculations, enhances geometric understanding, and streamlines problem solving across various fields. Without this method, mathematical calculations, especially those involving quadratic equations and higher dimensional problems, would become significantly more complex. Designing efficient structures, optimizing processes, and solving real-world problems would be much more laborious. al classical example of completing the square involves quadratic equations and a geometrical representation of what it means to solve it using a square. His method can be applied to other shapes like circles, cubes, and even forms of all kinds of dimensions. In the context of quadratic equations, this method involves manipulating the equation to create a perfect square trinomial, which can then be easily solved. When it comes to shapes, completing the square can be used to find the equation of a circle in the following form, where the point with coordinates h, k represents the center of the circle, while r represents the radius. By completing the square, you can convert this general form of the circle equation into the following standard form. Say we have this equation. This is the equation of a circle, but where is its center, and what is its radius? It's not immediately clear to us what would be the center of the circle or the radius. Actually, it's not clear at all. But manipulating the equation into the perfect square trinomial by completing the square will make it clear. If you've been enjoying this video so far, please give it a like. Group the x and y terms together, and move the constant term to the other side. Complete the square for the x terms. Take a square with all sides being x, and add two rectangles, with the longer side being 3 and the shorter x, since if we add the areas of the rectangles, we would get 6x. The remaining empty space would become a square with all sides being equal to 3, together making the area 9. So we completed the square. As a result, we have x plus 3 squared minus 9. If we go back to our initial equation, we can place the 9 behind the equal sign. If you do the same with y, you'd find that we have a square with sides y, two rectangles with sides 4 and y, and the remaining square with sides being 4. This would give us the equation y minus 4 to the second power minus 16. Once we put everything together, we would have this. Since plus 3 is the same as minus parenthesis minus 3, our center would be at the point minus 3, 4, while the radius would be square root of 30. Since remember, the r must be squared in the formula. When it comes to higher dimensions, like three-dimensional spheres, it may seem natural to assume that instead of using the completing the square technique, we would complete the cube. That is, instead of finding the empty space of the square, we'd find the empty space of the cube. But that's not true. Actually, as we go towards higher and higher dimensions, we would still use the completing the square technique. But instead of having only x and y coordinates, we would have the x, y, and z coordinates for three dimensions, for example. For each parenthesis, we would use the completing the square method. As we go towards higher and higher dimensions, completing the square would continue to be the appropriate method. But it would be completely impossible to visualize an accurate final shape that would form because it will be beyond our physical dimensions and comprehension. However, it is possible to use the completing the cube method, but that would be the case for an equation with a degree that is cubed, not squared. In that case, the resolution becomes far more complicated, and this time we would not be thinking about completing a simple square, but all the sides of a cube. The resultant shape would also be of a strange surface that has an S-curve with respect to a specific perspective. 
And these calculations can go higher and higher in dimensions and degrees. It seems like an abstract concept, but the concept of completing the square optimization has applications in countless areas, from soda cans to solar energy systems. One interesting real-life application related to the concept of completing the square and optimization involves the design of reflective surfaces in solar energy systems. Concentrated solar power CSP systems, use mirrors and lenses to concentrate a large area of sunlight onto a small area. This concentrated light is used as a heat source to generate steam, which then drives a turbine to produce electricity. The efficiency of these systems depends on how accurately sunlight can be focused onto the targeted area. Designing the shape of the reflective surface, often called a solar concentrator, is a challenging optimization problem. The goal is to maximize the concentration of sunlight onto the receiver, the small area, while minimizing the use of materials. By optimizing the mathematical equation representing the shape, which often involves quadratic and higher degree terms, engineers can use completing the square techniques to find the optimal dimensions of the concentrator. This process involves manipulating equations, finding critical points and optimizing the design. If you like this video, I'm sure you're gonna love this one. See you there!